Thank you, Pastor. You know, when I, we first came to Kenya, people were asking me, is that handsome young man your son? Well, Pastor Christian is actually my pastor. My wife and I attend the Living Hope Seventh-day Adventist Church, and uh, when we're not traveling, we're there every Sabbath. Pastor Christian is my pastor. So we invited him and his wife Heidi to join us here in Kenya. And he is just such a blessing to all of us. Each evening, we share with you reports from th throughout East, Af East Central Africa Division of what God is doing. And I'm impressed with the many different places that are hearing the message of the Bible, the message of Jesus and his second coming, and the message of hope. The African church is so incredibly creative. Let me give you some examples. Here's the Kenyatta Marketplace here in Nairobi, not far from our current location where we're holding these meetings. And a screen was put up, if you look at it carefully, it's put up on the side of a truck. And here, over 50 people gather in the marketplace daily to hear the word of God. Let's greet the Kenyatta Market in Nairobi. Just raise your hand. Kenyatta Market, welcome. We're glad you're there. And I personally invite you to come here to the church on tomorrow evening. Here is Aitaria in uh, Kisili. And uh, how do I pronounce that properly? How is it? That's right, I knew you could do it right. <laughs> well, that's right beside the highway, attracting people from all faiths. I mean, who would have ever thought? I know Americans would never th have thought of that. But the Kenyans are so incredibly creative that they put a tent up next to the highway and people are coming to hear the word of God. We get them in the highways, the byways, the churches, the marketplaces. Here are 3,000 students at Baraton University, and each night they follow the series. Let's greet those 3,000 students tonight. Welcome. We're so delighted that you are watching there at Baraton University. Yesterday, 505 souls were baptized in South Kivu in the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Hundreds are being baptized all around East Central Africa. Here's another baptism of 500 in Burundi. And uh, yesterday, but they said hundreds more in Burundi are waiting for baptism. That's a thousand people baptized in just the last two places that I've announced and baptisms are taking place throughout the East Central Africa Division. People are coming to Jesus. Their lives are being changed. And here, September 16, this coming Sabbath, we are going to have another amazing baptism. Hundreds are coming to Christ, many in this location, others in locations not far from here. And God is working powerfully to prepare for these baptisms. Even tonight, if you are considering Bible baptism, when I give the invitation, come forward. We'll pray together. Let's pray now. Father in heaven, as we study this very important topic of how to be free from Satan's temptations, I pray that you would touch each heart here, open our eyes to know your truth, open our hearts to follow your truth. Give us that faith, that courage to step out from the crowds and the majority to follow Jesus and to have our lives anchored in his word. We pray in Christ's name, amen. Down through the centuries, there's been a conflict between truth and error, between Christ and Satan. This conflict began thousands of years ago in heaven. Lucifer, the fallen angel, used powerful deceptions to deceive one-third of the angels. He's been deceiving men and women through 
the centuries. In Revelation chapter 12, we read, verses 8 and 9, So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth. His angels were cast out with him. Would Satan's deceptions be small ones? The Bible says he would deceive the whole world except those that would be faithful to God. In every generation, God would have men and women that were faithful to him. Now, Satan's major object of attack was the creator. Satan hates it that Jesus created the world and that Christ could bring forth life. The devil could never do that. So he's attempted to undermine God's authority, turning the attention of mankind from worshiping the creator to worshiping the objects of creation. We call that paganism, when men and women worship the sun, they worship the moon, they worship the stars, they worship the tree god, they worship the river god, they worship the snake god. So any time that the devil can transfer worship from the creator god to the things of creation, any object of creation, he has created deception. Now, down through the centuries, one of the things that the devil has done is turned attention to what is called the sun god. So the devil has turned people's attention to the largest luminous body in the heavens, namely the sun. We find that in cultures down in, in each civilization. For example, not long ago, I visited Egypt. I was studying there among the pyramids. And if you look at this pyramid, the side of it, you'll see it has the sun god Amun-Ra. And on the top of Amun-Ra's head, you'll see a circle. That is the worship of the sun in ancient Egypt. But you go beyond that, and you look at, here's a statue that the archaeologists discovered in ancient Egypt of Thoth. And what's on Thoth's head, everybody? What's on his head? A circle of what? The sun. Again, Egypt worshiping the sun god. In ancient Babylon, there was a god called Bel Marduk. And again, here you have one of the tablets that was discovered by the archaeologists of the ancient king sitting in his throne, but right above him is the sun god. In Egypt, they worship the sun. Babylon, they worship the sun. You go to Persia, it's called Mithraism. Here's another discovery. They're worshiping the what, everybody? Sun. Let's go to Greece. Here is Helios. And he, who is Helios? The sun god. Greece, they're worshiping the sun god. You go to this slab found in Rome. It's called Sola Invictus. Sola means sun. It's the worship of the sun. This tablet was a dedicated to the emperor's health called, and it was the, by the priest of Jupiter, they dedicated him to the sun god. So the devil has tried through the centuries to get the attention off the creator, get the attention away from the symbol of creation, the Sabbath, shift it to an object of creation, the sun. He succeeded in Egypt, he succeeded in Babylon, he succeeded in Medo-Persia, he succeeded in Greece, he succeeded in Rome, and he's succeeding in many Christian churches today who worship on Sun Day, the first day of the week. The symbol of the sun god, you can find it in India with the sun wheel. You can find it in Asia, in Pergamos. In contrast to worshiping the sun god, down through the centuries, God's people have worshiped the creator on the Bible Sabbath. We go back to Genesis. In Genesis, God set the Sabbath aside as an eternal reminder of his love and care. So as we come to Sabbath worship, the Bible says in Genesis 2, verse 2 and 3, on the seventh day, 
God ended his work which he had made. And he rested on the seventh day from all the work which he had done. And he blessed the seventh day and sanctified the seventh day. The seventh day Sabbath has been an eternal sign of God's love and care and a symbol that we worship the Creator for centuries. When God wrote the Ten Commandments with his own finger on tables of stone, one of those commandments says, remember the Sabbath day. God knew that people would forget the Sabbath. And so the first word is, what's the first word of the commandment, everybody? What is that? What is it? Remember the Sabbath day. How do I say remember in Swahili? Somebody help me. What's the word for remember? Somebody from the first row so I can hear. What's the, what's the word, David, for us in Swahili? Umbuka. Umbuka. Kumbuka. Kumbuka. Let's say it together. Kumbuka. How many of you want to kumbuka the Sabbath? Can I see your hands? Amen. We're going to kumbuka the Sabbath. We're going to remember the Sabbath day because God said to, why do we kumbuka the Sabbath? Why do we do that? Who said to kumbuka the Sabbath? Who wrote it with fingers of stone to kumbuka the Sabbath? Who wrote that with his own finger? God wrote it. See, the devil has a plan. Shift from worshiping the Creator on the Sabbath to unknowingly Christians worshiping the sun god, sun day, day of the sun. Egypt, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, all did that. The Sabbath was always a sign between God and his people that he was their powerful, loving creator. At a time when Israel, some of Israel, the Bible says, you know, in Ezekiel, that some of Israel came and turned their backs on the temple of God where the Ten Commandments was and they turned toward the sun. Even some Jews did that. But the Bible says that the Sabbath was always a sign between God and his people. So Ezekiel the prophet called out to those Jews that had turned their back on the Sabbath and he, and, and he called out and he repeated the words of God. Moreover, I also gave them my Sabbaths to be a sign between me and them. If you want to find the true church, find a Sabbath-keeping church because the Sabbath is God's sign. As you travel all over the world, when you see the flag of your nation, there's a certain sense of pride. When you see the Kenyan flag, it is just cloth, but it represents something. It represents the nation you love. When you see the Tanzanian flag, it's just cloth and color, but it represents the nation you love. When you see the flag of your nation, Rwandan flag, or the flag of, of, of Somalia, Sudan, or the flag of Democratic Republic, there's something about that. It's just a flag, but it represents something. So the Sabbath is God's flag that he flies over his true church. And you want to find the true church? Find a Sabbath-keeping, believing church. Throughout history, there was a contrast between worshiping the Creator and worshiping the Son, the object of creation. Now, isn't it logical that Satan, the great deceiver, would attack God's law? Isn't it logical that Satan, the great deceiver, would attack the Creator by challenging the symbol of creation, the Sabbath. Now, somebody says, but Pastor Mark, and I want you to keep this slide on the screen for a while. Somebody says, Pastor Mark, but on our calendars, on some calendars in Kenya and Tanzania, etc., doesn't it, isn't the, 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 the seventh day Sunday? Now, the Bible says that Sunday is the first day of the week. That's the day Jesus rose from the dead on. Then you have Monday the second, Tuesday the third, Wednesday the fourth, Thursday the fifth, Friday the sixth, and the seventh day of the week is Saturday. We call it Sabata, or so the seventh day, but you say, why does the calendar have it a little differently? Let me explain that to you. If you look at a Kenyan calendar 
in 1950, I was doing research on this today, always the seventh day of the week is mentioned as the Sabbath, always, never Sunday. It's the day we in English call Saturday. When was the change made? In 1988, the international standards, some group in Europe said, hey, wait a minute, why don't we make the Sunday the seventh day of the week? And they did, 1988. But I ask you this question. If for 2,000 years, Saturday was always the seventh day, who gives man? See, the devil wants to get all things confused, and he tries to confuse people. But Kenyans always knew, Tanzanians always knew, uh, uh, Ugandans always knew, Burundians always knew that the seventh day of the week was the Bible Sabbath. Let me give you an example from Kenya. How many of you have any Kenyan friends? You have any Kenyan friends at all? Okay. If you have a Kenyan friend who's a male who was born on Saturday, you know what his, or the seventh day, you know what his name is? Kwasi. Kwasi. What does Kwasi mean? Or Kwami, I'm sorry, Kwami. Kwami. Kwasi is the next day, Sunday. I'll come to that. Kwami. Why do you call somebody born on Saturday a male child Kwami? What does that literally mean? One belonging to the Creator. It means one belonging to the Creator. Why do you call a child born on the seventh day one belonging to the Creator? Because the seventh day is the Creator's day. It's Sabbath. If a child is born on Sunday in Ghana, what do you call him? A male child. Kwasi. What's Kwasi mean? Foreigner. Foreigner. Now, when I'm walking down the street in Ghana, they will say, say to me, Kwasi Brunei. What's Brunei mean? White foreigner. So I'm a white foreigner. On, if, I, if, if I'm walking down the street, why do you call? Now, let me ask you this. Why do you call somebody born on Saturday or the seventh day, the Creator's Day, and why do you call somebody from the first day a foreigner? Because white foreigners introduced a day called Sunday or the first day of the week. They introduced that contrary to the Bible because Africans from the earliest days when the Ethiopian eunuch came here, when the Ethiopian came, he introduced Sabbath to Africa and Sabbath was part of that African tradition. So. Don't be fooled by some Europeans who have changed your calendar to tell you a different day is the seventh day of the week. No, Sabota is the seventh day of the week. And I'll show you some more interesting things on that. Look, here's a Bible encyclopedia. Sabbath, a Hebrew word signifying rest. Sunday was a name given by the heathens to the first day of the week because it was the day on which they worshiped the sun. So Sabbath, Sabota, the seventh day, on the old Kenyan calendars up until 1988 and on the old African calendars, that's the day that God calls us to worship on. Who changed the Bible Sabbath then? Well, God didn't do it because the Bible says in Malachi 3, verse 8, I am the Lord, I do not, what everybody? Changed. Did Jesus change the Sabbath? He wouldn't have changed the Sabbath, written with his own thing, with God's finger on tables of stone. Jesus would never change the Bible Sabbath that his father gave. The Bible says, who changed the Sabbath? Jesus didn't. The Bible says, Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the what? The same when? Yesterday, today, and what? Forever. Do you believe Jesus is the same? Yesterday, today, and forever. So God didn't change the Sabbath. Jesus didn't change the Sabbath. Did the disciples change it? Certainly not. Look, Acts chapter 5, verse 29. Peter and the disciples answered and said, we are to obey God rather than men. So the disciples kept the Bible Sabbath. Peter, James, John kept the Sabbath. Why? Because Jesus taught them to keep the Sabbath because in Luke 4, verse 16, it says, as his custom was, Jesus went into the Sabbath, went into the synagogue on the, on the Sabbath. How did the Sabbath become changed? Who changed it? 
if God did not change it, if Jesus did not change it, if the disciples did not change it, if the Sabbath was kept by Adam and Eve, if it was kept by Moses, it was kept by Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel and all the Old Testament prophets, if the Sabbath was kept by Peter, James, and John, and Paul, if the Sabbath was kept by Jesus, how could it ever be changed? Let me give you the history of that change. We're going to open the history books tonight. We're going to look at, the, at, at a prophecy that is so incredibly amazing. In the early centuries, in the days of ancient Rome, the Roman Empire was losing its power. The Roman Empire was disintegrating. The Roman Empire was falling apart. The, the heathen tribes were coming down and carving up the Roman Empire. The Franks, a heathen tribe, took over France. The Alamanni took over parts of Germany. The Heruli, a tribe, took over parts of Italy. The Vandals came down to Africa and took over those parts. Constantine was the pagan Roman emperor. He became a Christian, but he was concerned. His empire was falling apart. He needed to do something to save it. The pagans were worshiping on the day of the sun. Christians, some Christians, were being considered as Jews, and the Jews were being persecuted. Constantine met with the church leaders, and gradually over time, to unite the empire, they said the pagans are worshiping on the day of the sun. Why don't we have Christians worship in honor of the resurrection on the first day? God didn't change the Sabbath. Jesus didn't change the Sabbath. The disciples didn't change the Sabbath. It was changed in the early centuries. Look, here's the first Sunday law passed by pagan Emperor Constantine, who had now become a Christian in A.D. 321, the fourth century. He says, on the venerable or the honorable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in the cities rest and let all the shops be closed. So this was not a worship day at first. See, the devil does things subtly. He does a little bit at a time. So first, Constantine said, let's have all the shops closed on Sunday. Then uniting with church leaders, church and state unite. As they unite, church leaders bring in Sunday. In, to preserve the Roman Empire, Constantine looked for ways to unite his kingdom. Christian leaders in Rome wanted to separate themselves from the Jews. So Sunday became the vehicle to unite church and state together. So Christians, for the first time, had authority by the church to begin to worshiping on Sunday. The devil succeeded in accomplishing his purpose of leading millions, millions, from worshiping the Creator to worshiping in a tradition in a teaching of man contrary to the Bible. This is an original co coin discovered by the archaeologists in Rome. Now you'll notice that on one side of the coin is Constantine's picture. On the other side of the coin is the sun god. So Constantine becomes a Christian, but he never wants to give up the sun god. And so therefore, unites with church leaders. God says to us, remember the Sabbath day, Subbata, the seventh day of the week from the original Bible calendars and remember that day and keep it holy. Now if you go to Rome, this is an unusual picture, very difficult to get today. This is in the Vatican and it's in the ceiling of Pope Julius I, his little basilica in St. Peter's Basilica. And do you know what the, what the Pope had Jesus pictured as? The sun god. Here, Christ is pictured as the sun god Helios or Solus Victus. And this is in the third century, exactly when they're changing the Sabbath. So pagan practices are coming into the church. Idols are being brought into the church. The idea of sun worship is being brought into the church. This is precisely why 
Christ has a message in the book of Revelation leading people back to the true Sabbath, leading them back to worship the Creator. Now here is the Catholic world. This is like an encyclopedia of Catholicism. Page 809. This is not some old reference. This is from March 1994. Listen to what our Catholic friends say. The Son was a foremost God with heathenism. There is, our Catholic friends say, in truth, something royal, kingly about the Son, making it a symbol of Jesus, the Son of Justice. Hence the church, who everybody? The church in these countries would seem to have said, keep that old pagan name. It shall remain consecrated and sanctified. And thus the pagan Sunday dedicated to Balder, that's the pagan sun god, became the Christian Sunday dedicated to Jesus. What does the church say? It says, let the pagans keep their worship of the sun and let Christians then unite and we'll have everybody together in a unity worshiping on the same day. The battle in the universe between good and evil is a battle over God's law. It's a battle over worship. The devil hates men and women that are obedient to God. The devil hates the creator. The devil hates the object of creation, the Sabbath. The Sabbath is at the heart of an end time controversy over the law of God. Now in Daniel chapter 7, there is an amazing prophecy in the seventh chapter that reveals that the church would change the Sabbath, that is the Roman church. It's an amazing prophecy. God knew that this change would take place ahead of time. And God warns us against that change. In Daniel chapter 7, the Bible outlines the nations of Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, and Rome. And he talks about them in animal figures, like as a lion, a bear, a leopard, and a dragon. And then the Bible talks about the breakup of the Roman Empire. And then it says, out of Rome, out of where, everybody? Out of where? Out of Rome. A power would arise that would think it had the authority to change God's law. Notice, here's the prophecy. Daniel 7, verse 25. He shall speak great words against the Most High. He shall wear out the saints of the Most High. And he shall think to change times and laws. What is the only one of the Ten Commandments that has to do with time? What's the only one of the Ten Commandments that has to do with time? Help me tonight. Which one? The fourth. And what's that about? The Sabbath. So here is a prophecy that a power would rise out of Rome in the early centuries. And we already showed historically that that happened as Constantine, the pagan Roman emperor, united with the Roman popes, and they united in an attempt to bring their empire together in a change of the Bible Sabbath from the seventh day Saturday or Subata to the first day Sunday and the devil was behind that deception. When one nation follows another it usually changes human laws. So when the Bible says in Daniel 7:25, he'll think to change times and laws it's not speaking about one nation following another nation and changing the laws of that nation. It says he'll speak great words against the Most High can there be any greater words against the Most High than an attempt to change the Sabbath that was written by God's own finger on tables of stone? The Bible says in Daniel 8 verse 12 that this power would cast the truth to the ground until he, he, he did this and prospered. So the truth about the Sabbath, about worshiping God as creator, was cast to the ground and trampled on. But in the last days of verse history, before the coming of Jesus, God has raised up a divine movement in the Seventh Day Adventist Church to exalt the truth of the Bible Sabbath again. 
to lead men and women back to worshiping the Creator. This power rising out of Rome would attempt to change the very law of God. Now, the Apostle Paul warned that in the midst of the Christian church, there would be those that would lead to apostasy or error. Look, here's what Paul said to the elders in the church of Ephesus, Acts chapter 20, verse 29 and 30. He says, also from among yourselves, who's he talking to? Christian leaders, among yourselves, there will arise those who will speak perverse things and draw away disciples after them. Here is a prediction, an amazing prediction that the devil would lead from the Christian church away from the words of the Bible, away from the truth of Scripture, away from the solid teachings of the Word of God. Yes, the Bible predicted that the Sabbath would be changed. Changed not by God, not by Jesus, but changed not by the disciples, but changed by man. The change of the Sabbath took place at a time of spiritual compromise when the Church of Rome and the Roman state united in an attempt to save their empire. Noted authorities in the Church of Rome uh, acknowledge making this change. You know, I was brought up in a lovely Roman Catholic home. My father was a Protestant, not a Seventh-day Adventist. My mother was a Catholic. And uh, I was taken at an early age, went to Catholic schools for eight years. I learned the Mass in Latin to memorize the Mass in, in Latin, the Catholic Mass. I um, was educated by the priests and the nuns. My father became a Seventh-day Adventist, and he began sharing these truths with me. He began sharing that the Sabbath was not changed by God, not changed by Jesus, not changed by the disciples, but changed by man. So I decided to do research on my own, because I knew that this, for me, would be a life-changing decision. One of the first things I did was go to the catechism. You see a picture of the catechism on the screen. So I went to the catechism, and this is called the Converts Catechism of Catholic Doctrine. For everybody that converts to Catholicism, they study this catechism. So as I went to my catechism, I looked and I read there. You know, the catechism is designed at questions and answers. And I read, which day is the Sabbath day? I was shocked. The seventh, Saturday is the Sabbath day. I said, wow, how could that be true? Then I looked at the next question. Why do we observe Sunday instead of Saturday in the Catholic Church? And here's what it said. Because the Catholic Church transformed the solemnity from Saturday to Sunday. Here in my catechism that I was studying, it said that the church that I loved at that time changed the Sabbath. So I had to ask the question, if God didn't change it, if 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 Jesus didn't change it, if the disciples didn't change it, does the church have the authority to change the Sabbath? Certainly not. I went on. There's a book called The Faith of Our Fathers. It's one of the classic writings of the church. The Faith of Our Fathers, written by a cardinal, a Catholic cardinal, and the Pope approved the book. So I had to do research, find out, is this really true? Did the church change the Sabbath? And I read this in the book. You may read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, and you'll not find a single line authorizing the sanctification of Sunday. Wow! The Catholic Church says that you can read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation? Nothing will authorize keeping Sunday? The scriptures enforce the religious observance of Saturday, the seventh day. Wow. Then I went to the Catholic Encyclopedia. Now, the Catholic Encyclopedia is foremost for all Catholic doctrine. This is what it says. The church, after changing the day of rest from the Jewish Sabbath, it's not the Jewish Sabbath, it's the Sabbath of the Lord, of the seventh day of the week to the first, made the third commandment refer to Sunday. Now, wait a minute. Third commandment, the Sabbath is what commandment, everybody? What commandment is the Sabbath? Fourth. 
How could they say it was the third? Because what's the first commandment? Thou shalt have what? No other gods before me. What's the second commandment? Thou shalt not make any graven image. What's the third? Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. So they drop the second commandment on making images. That brings the second commandment to thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. It brings the third commandment in the Catholic Catechism to the Sabbath. But then how do you get ten? You simply divide the commandment thou shalt not covet into two. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife and good. thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's goods. Remember what Daniel 7 verse 25 said? He shall think to change the times and it doesn't say law, singular. It says what? Laws. He shall think to change the times and the laws. So the change of the Sabbath by the Roman church is acknowledged by the church also making the fourth commandment the third commandment. What are the central issues in the change of the Sabbath from Saturday the seventh day to Sunday the first? There are many Christians attending this meeting. You love Jesus. You're faithful Baptist or non-denominational Christians or maybe Anglican Christians and Pentecostal Christians. You love Jesus. You want to follow him but you've never known these things before. You've never understood them. Maybe you were like me, growing up in a Sunday-keeping church. Maybe you're part of the Roman Catholic community, and you have, uh, like me. But when we hear truth, when we see what the Word of God teaches, the Spirit of God touches our hearts, and we can do no other but to step out and follow Christ. The Word of God calls us. The Word of God calls us to step out from the majority. I had to make a decision to step out. I was the captain of the Catholic basketball team. I was part of a youth organization of 500 Catholic youth. I was attending a Catholic cathedral of thousands. And in our community, there was no youth group of Adventists. There was just a small group of, of 40 Adventists meeting in a little small building. But I heard the call of God. I sensed that around the world, God was sending a message of his truth in a message called the three angels' messages where Jesus said through to John, John says, I saw another angel flying in the middle of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them, that dwell on the earth to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people saying, fear God, give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come, and worship him that made heaven, earth, sea, and the fountains of waters. Seventh-day Adventists are not simply another denomination. They are divine movement raised up by God to lead men and women back to worshiping the Creator God. The matter is, will we follow the Bible or the traditions of man? What is the foundation of our faith? What the Bible says or what man says? What is, who is our guide? Is our guide the Bible or is our guide tradition? Who is our leader? Is it the church or is it following God's will? What is the basis of authority in spiritual matters? Is it what some church says or is it what God says? Who is your master? Is your master a church leader? Or is your master Jesus Christ? I had to come to the conclusion in my life, if Jesus Christ is my master, I will step out and follow him. I will walk into the water and be baptized in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Here is our choice, the Bible or tradition. Here is our choice, Jesus Christ or religious leaders. Here is our choice, God's, land, God's law or man's dogma. Here is our choice, God's instruction or human teaching. Here is our choice, God's way or man's way. The Bible leads us, the book of Revelation leads us to keep the commandments of God. Tonight, wherever you are, do you hear Jesus calling you? Do you sense that you want to follow truth and follow it at any cost? 
in the last days of earth's history. There will be a conflict over the law of God. In the last days of earth's history, we once again will be called to stand in Jesus' grace, by Jesus' power, for the truth of God's word. If tonight you want to say, I want to be faithful to Christ, I want to follow Jesus, I want to follow Christ, not tradition, I want to follow the Bible, I want to worship the Creator, not someday man has brought in that has the trappings of sun worship. I want to worship the Creator. If that is your desire, wherever you are tonight, would you stand? You want to stand with Christ. You want to stand with Isaiah and Jeremiah and the disciples. You want to stand tonight with, with Peter and James and John. You want to stand tonight with Jesus Christ, wherever you are. Now tonight I have a special appeal. First, an appeal for Adventists. You know that God's calling you to keep that holy day, the Bible Sabbath. But if there are some of you tonight that you've drawn lax in your Sabbath keeping, and you know it. That, that, that for you as Adventists, the Sabbath doesn't mean as much anymore. You've drawn lax to it. But you hear the call of God tonight, and you say, Jesus, I want to recommit myself to the Sabbath truth. I've grown lax. I just want to come forward and recommit. Secondly, there's somebody in this audience here tonight that you've heard the truth of God and like me, you haven't been keeping the Bible Sabbath. Or maybe you've just begun to attend Adventist church and you've keeping it. I was sprinkled as a baby, but God called me to be baptized. And I walked through that water to accept God's last day church and movement. God is calling you tonight. You may be a Catholic Christian, God's calling you. You may be a Baptist Christian, God's calling you. You may be a Pentecostal, God is calling you. He is calling you to step out and be baptized. He's calling you to follow Him wherever you are tonight. If you're an Adventist and you've grown lax in your Sabbath keeping, God calls you to make a recommitment tonight. If you've never been baptized by immersion, by going under the water, by having sins cleansed, God is calling you tonight to make that decision. If you were baptized and drifted away, maybe you were a Christian, you drifted away. Maybe you're an Adventist and you drifted away. God's calling you to be rebaptized. I'm going to invite you to come. And tonight, I'm going to come down and just begin praying with you as you come. I'm trying to pray with as many people as I possibly can. You come tonight. At the screen, wherever you are, come. David, come. Make the appeal tonight. Make an appeal for those that have grown lax in their experience with God with, on the Sabbath. Make an appeal tonight for those that need to be baptized. Speak to them tonight. Wherever you are, come to the screen. Yes, wana kuita John here leo. Inawezekana wewe ulikuwa unashika sabato, lakini ukarudi nyuma. Ukao umeiharibu sabato. Tengeneza maisha yako upya na Yesu sasa hivi. Ulipokea imani hii na ukashindwa kutunza sabato vizuri, ukaivunja kwa namna moja ama nyingine. Wito huu ni kwa ajili yako. Njo hapa mbele ili uweze kutengeneza upya maisha yako na Yesu Kristo. Mwadventista msabato, ulijua sabato lakini ukaivunja mahala fulani. Njo kuna maombi maalum kwa ajili yako. Usipoteze muda, sogea hapa mbele. Sogea hapa mbele sasa. Lakini kundi la pili ni la wale ambao wanasema nahitaji kubatizwa. Nahitaji kubatizwa. Nahitaji kumpokea Yesu. Nilikuwa sijui hii sabato lakini nimeijua sasa. Na wewe njoo hapa mbele kuna maombi maalum kwa ajili yako. Mchungaji yuko tayari kuomba na wewe na kushika mkono. Na wale ambao wanaangalia kule mbali kwenye vituo, sogea pale mbele kuna watu maalum wanasubiria kwa ajili ya kukupokea. Saa imefika, sogea huku mbele. Naomba tuwasindikize hao marafiki zetu ambao wanahitaji kuja huku mbele. Njoni njoni tuwasindikize tuwasindikize tuwashike mkono njo nao moja kwa moja njo njo popote ulipo tuwapishe njia wale wote ambao wanasema nahitaji maombi maalum usiku wa leo jioni ya leo nahitaji maombi maalum kabisa nilijua sabato lakini niliivunja 
nataka nitengeneze maisha yangu na Yesu upya njoo hapa mbele sasa sogea hapa mbele sogea just come now and i'm going to be down here praying with those that njoo sasa tunakwenda kuomba pamoja njoo sasa njoo sasa njoo sasa njoo 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 nitaomba na kila ambao wanakuja hapa mbele mchungaji anasema naomba ufanye haraka mahali ulipo uweze kusogea wasindikize marafiki zetu mshike mkono njoo nae pamoja njoo pamoja maombi yameshaanza tayari maombi yameanza tayari unasema nahitaji maombi maalum na wewe njoo 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 sogea sogea inawezekana ulirudi nyuma kiroho lakini unahitaji sasa kurejea kwa Kristo sogea 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 wale ambao wanatoa kadi waendelee kuwapokea hawa na kuwapatia kadi hizi maalum tembea mahali ulipo nasema na mimi nahitaji maombi haya maalum nahitaji maombi haya maalum nahitaji kumpokea Yesu sogea 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 inawezekana unasikia ndani ya moyo wako Yesu anakuambia ulivunja sabato mahala fulani hebu njoo sasa ili uweze kuosha maisha yako tena sogea sogea pambe. kuna maombi maalum sijawahi kuona maombi kama haya ambayo yanafanyika mchungaji Macfin anayafanya sijawahi kuona ni maombi maalum usikose fursa hii usikose hii nafasi tembea haraka usikose nafasi kabla haijafungwa nafasi hii na wewe njoo unasema kwa kweli ndani ya moyo wangu nasikia niweze kufanya maombi haya maalum ili niweze kupokea utakaso nilivunja mahala fulani sogea lakini kuna wale ambao unasema mimi nahitaji kurudi nahitaji kumpokea Yesu inawezekana ujumbe wa sabato ulikuwa hujausikia lakini umausikia sasa va ujasiri na we tembea uje hapa mbele va ujasiri kule kwenye vituo kule kwenye vituo endeleeni kuwapokea watu endeleeni kuwapokea watu wanaokuja mbele endeleeni kuwapokea watu wanaokuja mbele kuwa jasiri tembea uje hapa mbele fanya haraka tembea uje hapa mbele Yesu ndiye anayekuita nafasi kama hii huenda isitokee tena kwako ukimuona kuna mwenzako ambaye anataka kuja mbele lakini ana sita mshike mkono njoo na yeye tembea tembea na yeye msindikize rafiki yako msindikize rafiki yako mchungaji yuko hapa kwa ajili ya maombi haya maalum jioni hii ya leo naomba usogee naomba usogee hapa mbele sogee hapa mbele inawezekana ulilazimishwa kufanya kazi siku ya sabato na ukafanya kazi siku ya sabato hicho ni kitu ambacho ni kinyume na Mungu ni muda wa kutengeneza maisha yako sasa vaa ujasiri utembee ulipolazimishwa kufanya kazi siku ya sabato ulikubali ukafanya kazi tembea 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 ulilazimishwa kwenda shule siku ya sabato na ukaenda shule tembea njo ni muda wa kuweka vizuri mambo yako na Yesu njo njo popote ulipo usikose maombi haya mahali tembea mahali ulipo tembea mahali ulipo naomba uweze kufanya haraka tembea kwa haraka maana muda huo sio rafiki lakini fanya haraka tembea haraka sana tuwaonyeshe njia ndugu zetu wanaokuja njo njo kuna maombi maalum kwa ajili yako wale kule njo tembea moja kwa moja mpaka hapa na unahitaji kubatizwa inawezekana ulikuwa hujashika sabato katika maisha yako hujashika sabato ulisikia ujumbe huu lakini hukuti leo unafanya maamuzi unasema nahitaji kushika sabato kama Yesu nahitaji kushika sabato kama mitume walivyoshika na wewe tembea njo hapa mbele njo hapa mbele tumesikia ushuhuda wa mchungaji vizuri kabisa hakuzaliwa katika imani hii lakini alisikia ujumbe akaufuata na wewe njoo karibu tembea uje tuwasindikize marafiki zetu wanaokuja moja kwa moja moja kwa moja msindikize rafiki yako mshike mkono njoo naye ni wakati wa kufanya maamuzi magumu katika maisha kati ya uzima na maudi kati ya amri za Mungu na mapokeo ya wanadamu bali kumfuata Yesu leo tembea 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 endelea kuja endelea kuja endelea kuja endelea kuja naomba tusogee hivi kidogo ili tuweze kuruhusu wenzetu wale nao wapate nafasi tusogee huku kidogo tusogee pande hii endelea kuja endelea kuja endelea kuja endelea kuja naomba wachungaji tusaidie kuwasogeza upande huu ili wale wapande kule waweze kuja pia kule kwenye vituo endelea kupokea watu wale wachungaji wa injilisti wazee wa kanisa walioko kwenye vituo maeneo mbalimbali endelea kuwapokea wale watu wanaokuja wale watu wanaokuja washike mkono omba nao omba nao omba nao washike mkono walete kwa Yesu ni wakati ambapo falme mbili zinanyang'anyana watu na lazima Yesu ashinde na wewe ambao unasikia ndani ya moyo wako kama moyo unakataa vaa ujasiri tembea umesikia ujumbe huu siku ya leo vaa ujasiri tembea 
huu jumbe huenda hutausikia tena vaa ujasiri tembea uje hapa mbele tembea uje hapa mbele tembea uje hapa mbele tembea uje hapa mbele kwa ajili ya maombi haya maalum tembea uje hapa mbele tembea uje hapa mbele tembea uje hapa mbele na huenda mchungaji anaendelea kuombea watu wengine basi wachungaji wanaendelea kuomba na watu wengine walioko hapa maana huenda siwezi kuja paka huku lakini hawa walioko wachungaji tuliopo tuendelee kuomba na watu kama hawa mchungaji kama ataweza kuja mpaka huku sawa lakini tuendelee kuatia moyo sogea 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 jo 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 tembea 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 so many are coming tonight. Watu wengi wanakuja usiku wa leo. We are praying with everybody we can. Tumeomba na watu wengi tulivyoweza. Pastors, I need your help. Wachungaji nahitaji misaada msaada wenu. Nahitaji msaada wenu wachungaji. Come into the group and pray with as many people as you can. Naomba muweze kuwa kwa kuomba pamoja na hao waliojitoa wachungaji mlioko hapa. Unaweza kusanya group moja la watu. Omba pamoja nao. Omba pamoja nao. Wachungaji kwa wingi mliopo wachungaji njoni mnisaidie wachungaji njoni mnisaidie ombeni na watu kama hawa ombeni na watu hawa pastors wherever you are wachungaji popote mlipo in whatever country you are nchi uliopo with hundreds coming forward watu wanapoendelea kuja mbele mamia ya watu come and pray with them omba pamoja nao pray personally with people omba na kila mtu anayekuja pale ombeni na watu kule kwenye vituo Put your hand on the new Weka weka mkono wako omba na watu kule kwenye vituo wachungaji waangelisti wazee wa makanisa omba na watu Come this is not a general prayer Jo sio maombi ya jumla haya ni maombi binafsi sio ya jumla haya It's a prayer for people that want to be baptized Ni kwa ajili ya watu ambao pia wanahitaji kubatizwa People that want to be rebaptized Watu ambao wanahitaji kubatizwa tena waliorudi nyuma People to keep the Sabbath Wanahitaji kutunza sabato I'm going to come down and pray Naenda kuomba sasa. And pastors just come through the group and pray with different people. Wachungaji endeleeni kuomba nao endeleeni kuomba na watu hawa na mimi naendelea kuomba na mimi naendelea kuomba na watu kama hawa. Mchungaji anaendelea kuzunguka kule kuomba na watu lakini bado wito haujafungwa. Inawezekana ulichelewa mahala fulani kuitikia wito huu. Sogea hapa mbele moja kwa moja endelea kutembea njoo hapa mbele uweze kupata maombi haya maalum na wale kule kwenye vituo wainjilisti wachungaji wazee wa makanisa naomba mwasogelee watu walioko kule ambao wamejitoa ombeni nao ombeni nao wale watu ambao kwa namna moja ama nyingine walirudi nyuma walivunja sabato kuna ambao wanahitaji kushika sabato kwa mara ya kwanza ndipo wamesikia ujumbe huu omba nao kule kwenye vituo omba nao kule kwenye vituo sogeeni mwe karibu nao fanyeni maombi kwa ajili ya watu hawa ni wakati ambapo wanaitwa kwa ajili ya kumfuata Yesu kwa ajili ya kumwabudu Mungu kweli kabisa omba nao kule kwenye vituo najua kuna wengine mna vituo viko majumbani kwenu fanyeni maombi wale ambao mna vituo kule kwenye nyumba ombeni na hao watu ambao wamekuja pale wamejitoa hata kama uko nyumbani ita wito ita wito masaa haya ita wito ili watu waweze kumpokea Yesu popote ulipo ita wito kule ulipo ita wito endelea kuomba na watu hawa ni wakati ambapo wanaitwa kwa ajili ya kumwabudu Mungu wa kweli kuacha tamaduni za watu na kufuata amri za Mungu popote ulipo maombi yaendelee wito uendelee wito uendelee acha watu waendelee kuja wampokee Yesu maana ukweli umesikika katika masikio yao na nyie wote ambao mko huku kwenye kanisa hili na wengine kule mbali ndani ya mioyo yenu endeleeni kuwaombea watu wanaofanya maamuzi maana sio uamuzi rahisi Unahitaji kujikana nafsi. Endelea kuwaombea watu wanaojitoa ili shetani asishikilie mtu hata mmoja. Wakubali waje waweze kumpokea Yesu na kufuata maelekezo ya Mungu. Kule mlipo kwenye vituo wale ambao ndio wenye vituo. Endeleeni kuwaombea wale watu wanaojitoa ndani ya moyo wako endelea kuomba, endelea kuomba. Fanya maamuzi usiku wa leo. Njoo hapa mbele sasa. Njoo hapa mbele sasa. Victories at this altar tonight. I just Shindi tayari mpatikana. I just met a lovely young Catholic. Nimekutana na mkatoliki kijana. And and she just responded to God's grace tonight. Na mejibu kwa neema ya Mungu siku wa leo. Stepped out to follow Jesus. Akatembea kumfuata Yesu Kristo. Can you say praise the Lord? Naweza ngosema Bwana asifiwe. Amen. 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 Let's pray together. Tuombe sasa. Father Baba Men and women have come tonight. Wanaume na wanawake wamekuja usiku leo. We've prayed over them. Tumewaombea. We asked you to enter their life. 
tunaomba uweze kuingia katika maisha yao to move upon their hearts na kuendelea kuwa kuwapa nguvu na kusogea zaidi katika maisha yao to fill them with your spirit wajaze kwa roho mtakatifu to give them strength na ukawape nguvu we praise your name for them tunaliinua jina lako Mungu wetu i praise you for those that have become lax in the sabbath but they've made a new decision to come inakusifu kwa ajili ya wale ambao walikuwa wamerudi nyuma lakini wamefanya maamuzi upya usiku wa leo i praise you for those who've heard the message of christ and desire to be baptized ninakushukuru kwa wale ambao wameshapokea ujumbe na wako tayari kubatizwa i praise you for those who have made a decision to be rebaptized ninakusifu kwa ajili ya wale ambao wamefanya maamuzi ya kubatizwa tena and i praise you for the thousands who've heard the call of god ninakusifu kwa ajili ya maelfu waliosikia wito wa kristo yesu on internet satellite radio kwa njia ya television satellite na njia ya internet we thank you for that tunakushukuru kwa ajili yao Now Lord. Sasa baba. Hold us in your hand. Ushikilie katika mikono yako. Keep us strong. Utuweke imara. Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Kwa njia nguvu wa Roho Mtakatifu. Until you come again. Hadi utakapokuja tena. In Jesus name. Kwa jina la Yesu Kristo. Amen. Amen. Now before you go tonight, you may be seated. Tomorrow night I'm going to speak on a topic that's very important for for Kenya and for Africa. My topic tomorrow night is cults. You know here in Kenya, foreign people die because they follow a cult leader. But many people are following cult leaders and they have no idea they are. So tomorrow night, how do you identify a cult? How do you keep from being deceived by a cult? If there's ever a time to bring your children and teenagers to the meeting, it's tomorrow night. So cults tomorrow night from the Bible. God bless you pastors I leave you. Mungu abariki sana. Somo la kesho anakwenda kuongelea habari ya dini za uongo, namna ya kujua dini za uongo. Usije ukakosa maana watu wanadanganywa sana. Mungu abariki sana. Tuelekee pale moja kwa moja kwa ajili ya maelekezo na maombi pale moja kwa moja. Bwana aendelee kuwabariki sana.